everyone, welcome to October Books. I am a person who thinks life is too short for bad books, so I can frequently start a lot of books and stop reading them 10, 15 percent of the way and they just don't grab me. This month I had a lot of really incredible books, so let's jump in. The first one is The Good Marriage, and this is flashing back and forth between now and then. And I love books that do that, as you're going to see with some other ones in here. But uh, now Lizzie is a lawyer and she gets a call from an old college friend that she has not been in touch with since she left college. And he's calling her, telling her that he's in Rikers Island. And she's like, whoa. And he's like, can you come see me? And she's like, that's not my type of case. So he ends up telling her that him and his wife were at a party and he left and he went for a long walk before going home. He gets home and she is dead at the bottom of their stairs in their foyer. There is blood everywhere. He calls the police, the police come and he is very distraught at having found his wife dead. And one of the police officers goes to grab him to pull him away and he tries to shrug them off and he accidentally elbows the policeman and ends up with a bloody nose. They weren't going to press charges because they realized it wasn't intentional until another prosecutor shows up on the scene and says, arrest him for assaulting a police officer. So that's what he's in Rikers for and she's pretty sure they're gonna start investigating if not laying charges on murder for him with his wife. He begs and pleads her to take on the case, so she does. Uh, she gets approval from her law firm. It flashes between now, with all of this going on, with Zach and Lizzie, modern day, he's in Rikers, she's a lawyer, and then back in college, and what happened with their friendship. I really enjoyed the writing style, the short chapters, just everything about it, and what I really, really loved was the lawyering part of it. Lizzie is a great lawyer, she does a great job, I really enjoyed capturing that. I felt like it was, I don't know, I just really enjoyed that part of the book especially. This was a thriller, it was a suspense, it was a whodunit, and I really enjoyed that. The next one, I read this right before Halloween, and boy oh boy was it spooky. It's called No Exit, and there's a girl, Darby, who's driving to see her mother who is in hospice, terminally ill and there is a horrific snowstorm. I think it's in the Rockies, um, the Rocky Mountain area, and just absolutely brutal snowstorm. She manages to make it to a rest stop, and there's other cars in the rest stop, and she kind of slides in, goes inside the rest stop, and there are four other people. She wants to phone her mother and her sister to let them know that she's stranded and delayed, and one of the fellows in the rest stop tells her an area of the parking lot where he managed to get a signal. So she goes out there to phone, couldn't get a signal. On her way back in, she's passing a van that it belongs, she assumes, to one of the people in this rest stop. And she sees a little girl in the back of the van inside a dog cage and is absolutely horrified. What unfolds is extremely suspenseful. They're all trapped in this rest stop. They can't get a phone signal. They can't get help. The roads aren't going to be plowed to the morning. It is such a buildup. And you're wondering who did what and how they're going to get out of there. I really enjoyed that one. He is an excellent writer and I definitely would read more of his. I think his name is Taylor Adams, but I'll link all these below to my book blog review as well as to a link on Amazon. The next one is a book about India in the 1950s. It's called The Henna Artist and it captures so much of India, of Lakshmi, she's the henna artist, of the ladies that she does the hennas for of the gossip, of her also selling some of her special herbs and sachets for their needs, of her being kind of a confidant within this group. It's so much of the dynamics of the various classism and sex within India that still exist today, but I really enjoyed all of this. Um, Lakshmi has a sister she didn't know about who shows up 
there's a lot of different dynamics in this book and a lot of different things that you aren't sure about. I felt like it flowed, it was beautiful writing, and I would definitely recommend it if that interests you and you enjoy books about India, and I would definitely read more by this author. We have two more books. This next one is again uh, current day and then, so going back and forth in time, and it, it starts with a girl waking up in her bookstore, and this is the day that her father is on death row and going to be executed. It flashes back to then, when she's a teenager and goes and lives with her grandmother, and you find out what happened with her dad and her mom and everything from back then to current day. And it goes back and forth. I really, really, really enjoyed this one. It was wonderful writing. It was a little quieter and less suspenseful and more deep. It was more about her demons and what haunted her. It had a lot of interesting characters, including an African Grey parrot that was her grandmother's and she now owns, and it's called The Professor. And he was kind of funny. Um, she lives above this old bookstore that she runs, and even that was sort of a character in its own right. And the town, I just really enjoyed it. I thought this was excellent writing and something I would definitely recommend. And the last one, I usually include a spiritual book. It's a Bible. This is a Life Application Study Bible in the New Living Translation. I've only ever read King James Version before. This is enjoyable. This is not written in thee and thou and that type of language. It is modern language and it makes it so readable. I cannot wait to sit down every day and to read this Bible. It's also in large print. My girlfriend that gifted this to me, I don't know how she knew, maybe it's my age, but I love how large it is. There's the Bible, and then just at the bottom of each page is a little something to help you interpret some of the verses. There's also uh, maps. There's information about the main character in the chapter that you're reading, what their good qualities, their negative qualities, their learning and opportunities, just different important key passages. I could curl up with this and read all day. It is so wonderful. I would like to know if any of you want to join me on a year-long challenge of reading the Bible. I'm going to put a link below to this chronological reading plan. You can print it off for free. It's two pages, it's six days a week, and it's a 52-week reading guide to get through the year. And it's in chronological order, so it starts in Genesis, then goes to John, and then Psalms, and then back to Genesis. I find it's very, very easy and readable. I mean, the first day is reading Genesis 1 and 2. And if you skip all the prolific who begot who, <laughs> It goes very, very, very quickly. It's not like you have to read, you know, a whole book of the Bible. It's a few chapters, and it's six days a week, so you can decide how you want to do that. I have had it where I've been so busy at work, and then sometimes when we drive up or drive down here, I'll do almost all of the reading from that week in that one time. Honestly, this is just such an amazing Bible that I could curl up and read it like I read a fiction book. It is just the language. I've never read anything except for King James, like I said, but this New Living Translation is so readable and I love it. So let me know below if you're interested in doing this chronological reading plan with me for the year. And I think it would be very interesting if it feels any different to me this time reading a book, the Bible in chronological order. So those are my books. If you have any that you've read this month that you want to share that are great, I love hearing your recommendations. And thank you so much. I hope you're having an amazing week and that you find time to curl up with a really good book. Thanks for spending some of your day with me, and we'll talk to you next time.